that's probably good. Alright. Oh my god, how's it going? It's been a minute, huh? It's been a, it's been a mighty minute. <clears throat> it's been, yeah. Lots, lots happened. Chat, Twitch, friends, followers. Oh, lots happened. Um, if anybody who's here has followed along, my cat, who had cancer, uh, keyword had there, she, she passed away. She was time. Didn't want her to suffer, so, you know, gotta do what you gotta do, I guess, and it was awful, and, but she, it was actually great. She had a great last day. It's awful because I miss her and she had cancer, um, and she deserved so much better than cancer. Um, well, hey, well, basically, uh, but yeah, she, she, uh, had like a pretty good week. She was kind of having ups and downs. Ever since her surgery in September, it was like ups and downs. And then she had a good week. And then, then by that weekend, it was like not great. And um, we were watching for signs, her to tell us when she was ready. And, you know, that's, I believe that was like, you know, hey, I'm not doing great. This is going to get worse. And that was the sign. And so, uh, yeah. Um, on her last day, though, it was November 15th, I believe. It was a Tuesday. Um, whenever that was, a few weeks ago now. Um, she had a really good day though, she didn't get sick once, like, cancer's been making her throw up randomly, not every day, not all the time, but it's just randomly, and there from towards the, that last weekend, that weekend that was bad, that told us it was the end, she was throwing up, like, a few times a day, and we were like, nope, this isn't gonna keep happening, and, um, the vet couldn't get out sooner than Tuesday, so we felt terrible, like, her Sunday and Monday just weren't great, and, but her Tuesday, her last day, like, I, I, you know, I, some, some must have just came over, I think she knew, but, um, her last day, we, she got up, and, early in the morning, and we went out for a walk, she didn't want to, she wasn't interested in food yet, but she wanted to go for a walk, and, because she knows what her harness, she knew what her harness was, and, um, she went for that, went for the door, and I was like, okay, okay, we'll go for a walk, let me put my shoes on, and so we went out for a walk, and, um, we went outside, we didn't go far, she didn't have a lot of energy, and we just kind of laid around in the yard, listened to the birds, she just wandered around, I let her do whatever she wanted, um, I even took her harness off, because she didn't seem like she was going to go far, and our place is kind of enclosed here, this little courtyard, and, um, then she... <laughs> wanted to go out of the courtyard and there's like a little space where she potentially could where I think a dog has dug just like a little bit or just the ra the ground is eroded really rather under this iron gate that we have and um uh she tried to get out under it and I was like no and I picked her up and she gave me a little hiss it was like a weak hiss but I was like oh honey she's still got some spice and we sat there for a little while and then I put her harness back on we walked around in the front yard out by the street like not in the street but closer than she usually gets and checking things out and then we came back inside and she I think I never slept that night or the following night <laughs> there's a handful of nights I didn't sleep at all um but we napped a little bit after her walk I just she passed out in the bed and I passed out next to her and then she well, I heard I had tried to give her a treat when we came back in and she wasn't interested and what woke me up was the jingling of her name tag on the side of her ceramic wet food dish and I was like oh she's eating and so I went and grabbed her a whole bag of wet food and just you know Hail Mary just dumped it in there and I was like if you if you want it here, here it is here's a whole bag of your favorite wet food and she ate almost the whole damn bag over the course of like two hours like more than she would eat when she was healthy in that span of time and she kept it all down and she was interested in other things like we had everything for her we had the, these freeze-dried treats um, treats that she that she's always been nuts for even a new one that we found right at the end of there like literally the last week of her life that she was she loved it made all her food great and um, I was giving her that like giving her more treats than she would even eat when she was healthy in one sitting and she was keeping them down <laughs> like and and kept everything down and she had a really good last day and we paid extra uh, we're, we're paying extra the credit card came in clutch but um, uh, the vet, I didn't want to stress her out. It, the vet's only five minutes away by car. Like, it's it's literally right down the road. But it stresses her out to get in the car and go anywhere. And I'm not going to do that to her on her last day on this earth. So, 
paid for the vet to come here and um, put her down and she died in my bed and peacefully and uh, she didn't enjoy the um, catheter going in there but nobody does <coughs> but she she went she she championed through it she was a pro she was she'd gotten you know shots and vaccines and things uh, her whole life for six years of her short brief life um, but she was she was good she championed through it and then we just laid there and relaxed for a little bit and they gave her the the stuff that helps her relax and then as she started to fall asleep they you know after she was asleep they did the rest and then they checked and she was like it's quick it was, she was it was very quick comfortable and quick and we were there with her but yeah that happened <laughs> let me catch up here yes you go to the vet come to my yeah yeah definitely more and more vets are doing that now thankfully uh, it seems like a, at least in the cities and you live in Tucson so it shouldn't be too hard to find a vet that will do that um, but yeah I think in the city here it wasn't hard to find something I'm so glad her vet did it because I would have went somewhere else I would have like she's registered at two different vets anyway it's because I have a friend that works in a vet's office in Scottsdale and uh, they were getting me prescriptions <laughs> and stuff for the cat so um, but yeah it's just so I didn't have to bother her vet with stuff but yeah her vet offered it and it was fantastic so that's a good service and I have a friend back in Illinois who called me the other day um, she's like 59 60 what was she telling me 61 now Jesus Christ we're all getting old I grew up with her kids her kids uh, she was like my mom 2.0 but she called me the other day and she, was, she she always has different dogs and cats and stuff, mostly dogs. And she was telling me that uh, she f changed vets. She wasn't really happy with a vet she had had for years and years and years. Um, because a new, had, a new vet had taken over at that office and it just kind of went to shit. And she found a different vet. She had to drive a little further, like all, nearly halfway to St. Louis, where we're from. We're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like the town that she lives in has like 2,000 people in it. Um, but she found a vet that's like an hour and a half away and they were willing to they come all the way to her place if she if she has an old dog you know near the end of its life so she recently found that for her dogs and I was like that's tremendous and that's what gave me, me the idea I was like hmm uh, I need to I need to find that for whisper and I did and her vet offered that so thank God that's my that's my biggest advice you live in South Carolina? Oh wait, why was I thinking you live in Tucson? Oh, the other guy lives in Tucson. Um, another friend of mine that gets in here a lot, he lives in Tucson. I had you guys confused for a second. South Carolina, well shit, you should be able to find something. <laughs> more and more vets everywhere. If my friend in Illinois is finding it, I'm getting it here. Sounds like people want it. Ray lives in Tucson, that's right. Ray lives in Tucson. There's a couple people who follow me on here who live in Tucson. I need to get down to Tucson. And South Carolina sometime. I've never been to the Carolinas. The farthest east I've been is Philadelphia, and that was for a purpose. That was in 2016, in the summer. So, imagine what that purpose was. Um, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> 2016, summer, lots and lots and lots and lots of people filling up the streets of Philly. Like, hundreds of thousands of people. Uh... And it wasn't televised. How about that? So anyway, mine it happened so suddenly like she stopped eating on Monday or Tuesday, Thursday. She was nothing but skin and bones on Friday. We called the vet to come and she came on Sunday. Jesus Christ, that is fast. Whisper was, was slow it seemed. Like she eased us into it. I think it could have been a lot faster. Um, but it seemed like from her surgery and she got through her healing process fine. Like we... She it's she seemed she kept her cone on the whole time. She did great, um, but ever since then it was like a ticking clock. Looking back on it, and she slowly, really slowly, lost weight. But it was like a real it was a slow fade, and only during that last week did she really get sick sick, where she was like throwing up a bunch. She would throw up like here and there. Um, her last couple of weeks, like when it started, it was really gradually, and we're like hmm, maybe we need to up her CBD dose, and then we would up her CBD dose, because, like, she threw up one time, <laughs> one time in, like, halfway through this, this whole thing, from September to November, 
was the two months from the surgery to November. It was literally almost exactly two months. And I got her pet CBD, like specifically formulated for cats. And the first time she threw up, I was like, okay, we're going to start the CBD. Um, and I got it like in the mail, literally like the next day. It couldn't have came at a better time. Um, started giving her the CBD, throwing up stopped. Stopped for like a whole, whole week or, or so. And then little by little, like random throw up, you know, just a little bit, little bile, that kind of thing. And I was like, hmm. And so I upped her dose a little bit because she'd been on it. And we kept, you know, gradually up to the maximum dose for a cat. And finally, uh, like, it kind of leveled out where she wasn't throwing up. And then, like, the last two weeks, then they're right before her death in November, it was just like, the CBD's not helping anymore. And so, you know, and so, yeah, <laughs> we just that last weekend was like, hey, yeah, I'm sick sick, and I was like, yeah, we see it, we're not gonna let it get any worse, so, when we, I don't think we let her suffer, I asked the vet, because I noticed she lost weight, and the vet was like, that's normal for a cat with cancer, she's like, but she saw the cancer food, the prescription cancer food, she's like, where'd you get the prescription, and I was like, another vet, I'm sorry, <laughs> and she's like, that's okay, <laughs> um, she was not mad, she's like, uh, we had special feline oncology food for her. We had this whey key eastern herbal formula that we were giving her. We had the CBD oil. We were doing everything we could for her, and uh, the vet saw that. She, like, she, I, sh I was showing her stuff as, as they were leaving, and she, she was like, because I needed to know. I was like, did I do everything? Did we do this right? Did we wait too long? And she was like, no, no, you did everything right. You gave her everything you, you should have given her and more, more than most people, you know, even do. And um, she was like, she, she did not suffer for very long and she didn't suffer very much. She's like, she threw up a few times and got thin. She's like, you know, she wasn't drag. I've, she's, she said she's seen cats with like massive tumors dragging their legs around like people let them go really, really far, you know, before they put them down. And she's like, you guys were just perfect. She couldn't have had better people. And I was like, oh my God. And I just died. I just like broke down and died. But she was great. Our vet's lovely. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> It was a lot, and it was a, she had still a lot, and I miss my baby. She was only six, and she was, I've known a lot of lovely animals in my lifetime, like a lot, since I was a kid, of all different kinds. I had a bird when I was a kid, uh, I have had dogs, cats, I've had, a, you know, some weird exotic animals, I even, I have a rabbit still to this day, but that cat was entirely unique. Each animal's unique, each animal has its own personality, but Whisper was exceptional. <clears throat> I mean, I knew the day was not too far away because she was almost whoo, 20, but you'd never have known it. She ran around and did everything. Oh, yeah. Damn, suddenly. Well, you know what? Honestly, that's a blessing because she was 20. Good for her, reaching 20. Bravo, kitty. But, you know, better than just a quick, hey, you know, I'm, I'm on my way out than like a long suffering. Like, I feel like the only reason Whisper sort of eased was because she was easing us into life without her, because it was kind of all sudden for us. It was, it was really, earlier this year you would have never fucking known anything was going on. You know, she was a perfectly healthy cat. She was maybe even a, a pound overweight. She was, she's a big girl. She was a big, she was big for a girl cat, and especially a twerty girl. She was like 14 pounds at her biggest at one point, and at that t at that point, they were like, she needs to lose a pound or two, maybe be 12 pounds, and I was like, yeah, whatever, she's a big cat, <laughs> she's chunky, but she was always healthy, never super overweight, but like, you know, healthy, and she liked going on walks and stuff, that's why I was like, I'm not, I was never worried about her losing weight, and then there at the end, she lost weight, and I was like, oh, sweetheart, oh, my skinny girl. <laughs> And it's, I think it was better that your, yours went fast. That's kind of a blessing. <sighs> 16 years, caught her in one of my traps. Aww. Aww, that's a good emote. I should make Whisper an emote. I don't know how to make emotes. Maybe I'll figure that out one day. That's cute. Oh, my whizzy. I miss my kid. I miss my kid. <clears throat> Damn it. <laughs> Can't fuck cancer, am I right? Fuck. Fuck cancer. Can I say that on Twitch? 
Alright, so let's do stuff. I should do something, right? I should do this. <laughs> That's the update on my cat died. But let's let's do other stuff. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this before. Fuck, how am I gonna play it through here? You know what? I could play it on my phone question mark? I didn't think this through. <laughs> Go figure. <clears throat> um, left at wall trailer. Let me let me see if I can, because I got sound running through my phone for music. If I can just sync it up with this, I can just watch it here. Let's see. God damn it! Why does YouTube have to suck? Oh my god. There we go. Okay. There we go. Let me see. This is going to be kind of loud. Alright, I might clip this later for YouTube. So, um, if anybody remembers, last time when I was on here about a month ago before everything happened with my cat. That's why I've been gone so long, the cat stuff. <sighs> and I miss her dearly. But um, before that, I did do one stream. Uh, I mustered up the courage to do a stream back then, and I think back in October. And we went over these... Uh... Oh, it was November. It was right, It was coming up, yeah. Left at Wall. It was, it, it was this movie I worked on back in April. Um, Ron Placone, comedian... And I'd go so far as to call him a journalist. I don't think he'd call himself one, maybe, but I, I would say so. Uh, some of the best journalists are comedians, right? But anyway, I worked on this movie with Ron. Um, he had me come out and do the behind-the-scenes footage. He wrote, directed, acted in it. He did all the, all the hard work, put all of his money and blood, sweat, and tears into it. And I had the honor to come take pictures of it. So it was awesome, uh, actually. And I met some really awesome people, all of these people freaking awesome. Couldn't have worked with, like, better people for my first, you know, taste of doing movie stuff, taking pictures on movie sets. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to do it for, like, three days, I think. Yeah, three days, three different locations. And it was a lot of fun. And the last day, there was, like, real gaffing and stuff going on, like, making little scaffolding, covering up windows, and doing all the lighting, and, like, you know, fancy. But, um, it was a lot of fun. I had, a, I had a really good time working on this movie. So, yeah, I have th yeah, three days. Durr, it's right here. Oh, and I even got me on set. I haven't shown these yet. But a lovely lady whose home we were actually shooting in, she was also working on the movie, um, she taught me how to do a clapboard properly. Like how to write on it, call it out, clap it, how you, how you clap it, and how long you have to wait after you clap it to like walk away, it's a whole thing. Um, and I got to do it a few times, and she took my camera and took a few photos for me. And I got Gareth back there. If anybody's familiar with this guy, he's funny, he's a funny comedian. Um, Gareth Reynolds, check him out. But yeah, that's me on the set. I got to do stuff. It was a lot of fun. Looks like a fun shoot. Uh, yeah, yeah, clapping that little clapboard's kind of complicated. And a lot of people, at least on our set, and they said on some other sets, let me bring up the clapboard again. So, like, uh, for example, I can't zoom in right now because I'm in preview. Or can I? Oh, wait, I can. I'm so used to f using Photoshop. So, let's say you're doing, okay, this was 26B, right? So, I would say left at wall roll five, scene 26, and instead of saying B, you, we usually say like a, a band name. Um, you establish what you're going to do at the beginning of the movie, and then you just do that throughout the entire thing, because you will get through some, not not this one, this was a little short indie film, but some big, big, big movies will get through the alphabet a couple of times, and there will be multiple letters on there, like A, B, C, you know. Um, so you do your best to try not to call them out, or you're going to call them out phonetically, like with the phonetic alphabet, or you're going to use something fun like band names. So um, that's what we did, because <laughs> there's a billion bands in the world, right? 
So uh, 26B, I can't remember what we said for that, but that's what we would have done there. And it, you just call out that row. You don't have to call out the rest of the crap. That's just for the camera. That's in from, well, that's for the editor. This is for the editor to know. But yes, all, well, all of this is for the editor to know. But you want to say it so sound knows they're picking it up. So you say that whole row in the title and then clap it and then hold it for just a second and then move it down and move out. Like, and as you're doing the hold and the move, you also have to be simultaneously moving out. But it has to take a couple of seconds. You don't want to move too fast or too slow. Uh, it's a whole thing. Yeah, it's, but yeah it, was, it was cool. It was pretty neat. Really enjoyed that. And what was day three? Oh, that was where they were really getting into setting up the lights. I got some behind the scenes on that. And I was in love with the Tales from the Crypt comics on the wall. <laughs> Those are nice to see. Yeah, makeup, makeup's happening. Fun times, fun times with makeup. The makeup girl was lovely. I follow her on Instagram. She does some pretty great makeup. She works on a lot of little movies. It's pretty cool. I hope one day she works on big movies. Oh yeah, and I got to meet fucking Pepitone, man. This guy's a legend. I got to meet, I got to meet fucking Pepitone. And I made a few fl uh, flyers, uh, f posters, off of this. Um, I didn't volunteer, but I think two and two go together. If you take the photos, you usually those photos end up being the cover for the movie. So since I also do graphic design, I made these up. And uh, the director, that guy, liked them enough to use them. So that's the poster for the movie. And the movie's released at the San Pedro International Film Festival on November... It was like the first weekend of November. It's like a Thursday or a Friday, something like that. And now it's out, but it's traveling. Because it's an indie film, right? So it's going to be going to different film festivals. Like, I think for the next year. It's just going to be showing and premiering at different theaters around the country. And the director will be at some of them to like Q&A with people and shit like that. So that should be pretty awesome. I'm going to catch the one in Tucson in February. I don't know where else. I, I, I know there's going to be one in Washington, D.C. There's going to be one in the mid-flyover states where I'm from, the Midwest. God, I forgot what it was called for a second. Baja Men, the Bee Gees. Probably Bee Gees. That might have been what we used. Serious money in that. There was a guy in the photo club I used to be in who did that for movies. He made crazy. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do, is make a crazy living at it. I need to get in the union. Um, if I'd have had, I, I took a short film stills class over the summer after I worked on this movie. Actually, um, I found. Uh, I don't know how I found it. Maybe social media somewhere, and I just accidentally signed up for something. But there's this lady who does, who's like. I guess famous for behind the scenes photography like she's worked on a lot of big big movies um, one of the Daniel Craig 007's and some other stuff but she does for a s extra income I assume she does this these classes to help people and make a little extra money um, but I found it really good she offered this whole like multiple day it was like a four day free thing where we got on for like a zoom class every day for an hour and change if she like she w she wasn't strict about cutting us off she would like let us chat and ask questions for a while but roughly an hour for like multiple days and she didn't get too deep deep into how everything works because that's what you're gonna pay for later but she skimmed over it pretty well and I like she gave us like this little worksheet to keep notes on and I did and she was pretty good at like bullet pointing her points and shit like that like actually making points and you know teaching me something um, and it was free, so that was dope. And it was, like, her giving up her time, which I appreciate. Um, and I forget her name. I'll have to look it up next time and mention her. But uh, she offered a class right after that was over, and it was, like, a $1,500 class. And it was going to get more in-depth into how to get in it, how to work in it, how to make money in it, all that stuff. And I was like, mm, that's what I need to know. And, <laughs> but um, she did give us some little tidbits, uh and that was join the union. Um, uh, that that definitely helps. It could, it, like, she played both sides of the fence. She's like, you know, 
it can definitely hinder or help depends on what area you want to work in and I was like I just want to work in the right area and a union sounds good for me so yeah if I could join the um, whatever there's I wrote them down I still have the worksheet and all the notes and everything from that but I'd like to get into that and do it more full-time and I live here and I know there's like a new kind of a Hollywood growing Hollywood there's an Arizona Hollywood growing here there's like Scottsdale's trying to have like a film industry and that's cool and everything I just hope that you know I can get involved somehow and do behind the scenes for some of these movies or something and get into it and start working because obviously I can do it I did it for this movie and I've done a it's really just doing event photography that's all it is They're just being very quiet and, <laughs> and minding exactly where you are so you don't trip over anything or get in the shot and just taking photos and trying to line up every every shot or so just lining it up with the camera so you're getting you know the exact shot that the camera's getting that people will see later in the movie. As long as you're getting a few of those hero shots, you're, you're, you're golden. You can do all kinds of fun stuff behind the scenes. So yeah, that's I'd like to do that. I really would. But yeah, I made this flyer, and then there's another one that's being circulated now. Um, gosh, which one? Let me see. Do I have it here? Easy to find. Uh... The stuff I made. Here we go. Yeah, this one's circulating. This was the I made a bunch of little samples. It only took me like a couple hours. This one's circulating around because it's about um, it's about what happened with the uh, GameStop stuff and Wall Street. This was written over COVID, so it, sh it was would have been more relevant if it had been able to be get finished when it was intended to. But he went through with it, and it's actually it's a really dope story. Um, but I incorporated that vibe into this cover. And there's a part in the movie you saw in the behind the scenes where they're playing the spike ball game. So Wall Street Bowl, Ocean, Wall, Spike Ball, Beach. It all ties in. I don't know. I like it. That's one of my favorites. I'm glad it got selected. Flickercrest. Hi! That's a fun name to say. Flickercrest. It sounds like something from Hunger Games. It sounds like a Hunger Games name. I love it. I love that name. That's fantastic. Flickercrest. Please don't be offended. I love Hunger Game names. They're so much fun to say. <clears throat> okay, let's try uh, to watch this trailer. Because the trailer for this movie is out now. And remember, it's an indie film. It's a little bitty, but it's small. <laughs> but I'm actually in it for a second, so tell me if you can spot me when you see me. Let's see if I can get this to work. <clears throat> One, two, three... So, uh, you must want to talk about something if you came all the way here. What's up? Nope. Hold on, I didn't get to sync up right. <laughs> I suck. They wanted to play at different times. There we go. That should do. So, uh, you must want to talk about something if you came all the way here. What's up? I'm gonna propose. No way. Certainly don't think of it as something where you kind of have to outdo what Tiffany and I did. We had such a big wedding because it means nothing to us. You know, her family has money, I have a ton of money. Don, can we not talk about money right now? Well, why else are you telling me this? Because you're my brother. So, I'm a writer. My brother Don is on Wall Street. They basically created a casino out of our economy. No, we're short selling the stock, which is financial jargon for, I, you probably wouldn't understand. You know, I bet I would. It's just you guys are so hard on each other. Like, yes, he constantly condescends you, but you don't give him much of a chance either. What the hell do you mean you don't know how to make an old fashioned? How about this, let me behind the bar, I'll make the old fashioned myself. Give me a break, pal. Does this place look like we make old fashions? I just can't do this anymore. I think we need a break. What? So there I was. No girlfriend, no work, no agent. Was this rock bottom? And that's when I got an idea. Dude, Game Bites. We all need to buy shares of it. I lost a lot because of these idiot hackers. 
Well, they're not hackers, but... This isn't about you, Don. This is bigger. This is about sticking up to this corrupt system and actually fighting back for one. Oh, system. shut up, John, with your self-righteous bullshit. Yeah, so that's the trailer for that. That's pretty, uh, pretty friggin' rad, I think. I don't want to watch, uh, Alien, <laughs> Alien Encounters, okay. I should, we should sometime, just watch shit on here, and I can do reaction stuff, because I grew up with Mr. Science Theater and still watch Rift Tracks, so... Kind of in my wheelhouse to do reaction videos. I just don't. I should. I should, I should monetize. Oh, Clappy, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate the Clappies. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, um, that's a trailer. So anyway, if you hear an ambient noise, it's a heater because I'm chilly. And speaking of I'm chilly, I'm going to cover up my cold little noggin. Kind of cold today. Uh, kind of cold. And we're going to do watermelon art. I'm feeling like watermelons. You know? No, no reason. No reason. Just, uh, just feeling like making art that has watermelons in it. You know? Because uh, watermelons are fun. Colorful. Juicy. Delicious fruits. Um, covering up my cold little noggin. I'm chilly. I got my little space heater on. So, uh, let's see. Got my shema because I'm, cause I'm cold. So, yeah. Sometimes you just got to make art with watermelons. Um, so, we're going to do that. We're going <laughs> to... We're gonna do that today. Oh, we're gonna make some watermelon art. So I've already been working on some stuff. I got this, this little guy I've been working on. I've been thinking about watermelons a lot <clears throat> um, for the past month, really. I've been thinking about watermelons. Longer than that, really, I've had watermelons on the mind for about 75 years. Um, but yeah, watermelons, always on the mind. Anyway, uh, Let's 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 just make some let's just let's just do some stuff with watermelons. You know? That's that's what I'm feeling like today. Doing some stuff with watermelons. It's gonna be fun. <clears throat> that math tracks. Yeah, yeah, you know. Watermelons. So anyway, uh I found I'm looking at melons here. I'm right now I'm in the gathering stages and I don't really know what I want to do. But I found melons. I found some, some melon, you know, I, everything I do is, uh, everything I do is like composite, like, uh, cause I don't do like drawing tablet. So painting is like painting with a rock with this thing. So I'm not really, I could draw on a computer, but it's tough. Um, so I do a lot of composite stuff cause that's just what I'm good at. So don't judge me. <laughs> and I've also, uh, had AI do a couple of inspo pieces for me just so I can kind of see what I'm what I might want to do, um, but yeah, we're just kind of looking at watermelon, watermelon related things. I also have some unrelated to watermelons. We're going to mix these with the melons, um, cause you know, you always love a good fist in a melon, near a melon, um, in and around melons. Just just gonna just some different random totally random elements today that's what we're gonna put together totally random elements we're gonna try to make some art out of fists and watermelons and uh, what else we got? I got this really great color palette that I love let me show you this color I'm gonna use this one uh, really really loving this color pattern it's just, it's just such a great color pattern, you know? Love red, and the black, and the white. A little bit of green in there. Yeah. Really loving that. So, we're going to use that as, actually, as what we can select. Because this, this is, like, like as close as you can get to, so like, the perfect colors for that color pattern. So, we're going to use that for our eyedropper tool. You betcha. You betcha. That's a cool color pattern. So anyway, we're going to incorporate that color pattern with some watermelons and some, some fists. Every time I say fist, I think Kit Fisto. Um, <laughs> I can't not laugh about it. I don't even know what the season is for watermelons. Probably summer. Probably. Uh, you never know. Yeah, I, I was thinking that the other day. I was like, hmm, 
it's November. And then I, I was like, I could do some watermelon art. <laughs> That's totally the season for watermelons. And then I went to the grocery store and I was like, oh, right. I live in America where I can have watermelons whenever the fuck I want to. Um, so we're going to make watermelon art. I have to be very careful. I Like, I can go eat some watermelons at the grocery store, but I can't... <laughs> uh, censorship is alive and well. Uh, watermelons are also alive and well here. So um, we can have watermelons whenever we want and uh, horrifying censorship whenever we want. So, yeah. God bless America, right? God God bless. Yeah, so let's, let's get into some watermelons. <clears throat> Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. If anybody asks, I'm just, I'm just cold or a Sith, you know, kind of, that's just kind of the clothes I wear anyway, kind of pass as a casual Sith on most days. Um, so we got fists, we got melons, we got a cool color pattern that we like. Oh, I also love this pattern, this pattern with the, with the, like, fishnet and the, yeah, uh, that's cool. That's just a random totally random pattern that's really awesome uh, that we're going to put into some art today. So, yep, let's do it. When we got opened up here, we, oh, we got some fists. Ooh, sheesh, we got some fists. Um, gosh, which, which, oh boy, which fist do I want to use? Those, that's fit, that fist is already kind of in the color scheme. Gosh. Oh boy. Oh man, I bet I could make this look like a watermelon. Let's see. Oh. Oh, that's exciting. Let's have some water. And make some random watermelon themed art, huh? Totally random. had a bunch of stuff layered on this one. Might make a couple different things, because I had a couple different things in mind. Um, yeah, let's see, what kind of, I'll just work on this right here. Can I make that look like a water? You know what I said? I just said I was going to use it as a color selector. I even have it labeled color selector. Notice my, notice the trouble I went through, through here to uh, make sure these things aren't labeled uh, <laughs> this is just this is just word number two right word number two and and word number one word number one word number two we're not gonna hang on those too long but yeah um, mm-hmm mm -hmm. went through painstaking carefully just there's a melon key color splat Oh, there's another color splat. Oh, here's a co lovely color pattern. A colorful textile. A color crumble. <laughs> it's a color crumble. Uh, a cold Sith, yes. I can't imagine a nobler person. <laughs> Always wanted to try putting liquor in a watermelon ever since I saw them do it on the Irishman. Mmm. What is it you're looking at these on? Looking at these on? We're looking at what on? Looking at this? Where did I find these or what am I looking at? Like my computer? What are we... Oh yeah, my software? Oh, this is one of those newfangled... Uh, it's probably going to be a regret and I haven't even paid it off yet. I had to take... <laughs> I had to take out a little chunk of a loan to get it. It's a new Mac M2, I believe. Um, Ever since Mac made their own chips. I've been using Macs for a long, long time. I used to use Windows, and then I used a Linux-based machine where you could build your own stuff, and then I realized that Windows was hot trash um, when it came to building, like, not the hardware, but the software. Because uh, you need more freedom for software, and Windows doesn't really offer that freedom. But, um... I worked with the Linux based machine for a while and then I moved to Mac whenever I worked in Norway and could afford to buy a Mac. Um, but yeah, I've had Mac since like 2008 and I know they suck for a lot of other stuff, 
<laughs> and Apple sucks for a whole bunch of reasons. But um, my 2015 was the last time I bought one. I try to make my computers last as long as I can. And um, 2015 was the old, it's still being used. Like, it's still in use. It just can't be used for what I need a computer for. Like, I need, like, super high powered crap right now. <laughs> my computer was crashing every five seconds. Um, because it wouldn't deal with the gigantic files that my camera takes and then I put them into Photoshop and I make a 20 layers and it's like a f 4 gigabyte size thing and my computer's like beep can't process that so oh pardon me my rabbit's having a little bit of a fit I'll be right back <clears throat> in a hot second Okay, I think that solved her problem. She couldn't move. She couldn't move something. <laughs> One of her toys was stuck. Uh, and she's got like this huge condo of an apartment. My rabbit, she's usually free range, but while I'm over here doing this, I can't keep an eye on her. So she has to go in her little apartment. And her little apartment is a gigantic ass dog kennel. <laughs> it's not really a rabbit cage. It's an open air, you know, thing. So, um... She's got like a whole huge cardboard moving box in there that we've cut like doors into so she can go in it and hide. It's like her little office. Um, and she's got food, water, everything. Litter box, big grass box for her to dig in, toys. But she doesn't want to be contained even though she's got in the biggest house a rabbit's ever had. She doesn't want to be contained. I've seen play pins for human babies smaller than that. So. <laughs> And she's a little bunny. Girl, you got plenty of space. Take it easy. I will let you out again as soon as I'm done over here. Please. Try to understand. You can exist over there for um, another hour. You have a big house. God, she's, <laughs> she's got a big old house. I don't think she understands how good she's got it. Like it's it was it's a dog kennel you can put a German Shepherd in. We just don't ha we didn't put the roof on it, cause what is she gonna do? When she stands up, she's barely she's half of the thing. <laughs> she can't. Yeah. I don't believe in putting rabbits in small ass cages. The cages you see at a pet store are not appropriate. Oh, so that's just for photos for the, oh sorry let me go back to this computer thing the rabbit was a huge distraction uh what is it you're looking at these on yes we figured that out okay so that's just the photos for the mac os or whatever i'm windows yeah i do the same i buy the best computer i can with my budget i always spend a lot buy my computer as little yeah yeah no that's unfortunately planned obsolescence has invaded everything and every <laughs> everywhere but like my phone that I'm running on right now, I love Galaxy. I'm not an iPhone. I hate iPhones. I think iPhones suck. Um, I love my Android. Love my Galaxy phone. I have used an iPhone and I just couldn't get into it. Um, but I've always had Galaxies since they began. I think since Galaxy like one, and um, I, I'm on the 20 still. It's so it's four years old next year, and I'm just gonna keep on using it for as long as I can because. Um, Congo? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna buy any new tech if I can help it. The computer was, like, my hands were tied. If I want to keep doing my job, I have to have a new computer, and I've been using Mac for my job for so long. I'm sure these, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom are no different on a Windows, but... Uh, I don't know. I've just, I've just gotten used to Mac for so long. I love... I love it. <laughs> I love the way it works. I don't... It's not... 
clunky, bogged down, it, like I can, I don't know. Maybe Windows has changed, but the last time I used it compared to Mac, I was Mac any day of the week. But yeah, I spent, oh my god, so much money on this computer. Whew. Yeah, it was a loan, and I gotta pay back that loan for a little while. But it'll be alright. <laughs> as long as I can make $130 a month minimum for the next <laughs> uh, four and a half years, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was an expensive. Oh, that was another thing that kind of messed me up about this computer. Um, the computer guy, I, ha I called a computer guy. I have a guy. And he tells me the truth about things. Uh, and he's like Windows and Mac. He can go both ways. So he understands why I like Mac. He can also, like, you know, understand why somebody would like Windows for the, you know, similar reasons or different reasons. But I was asking him, I was like, man, are there any good iMacs? Because that's what I had before. It was just the iMac desktop, and I loved it. And he was like, no, you had the last good one. That was the last good year. It was about 2015. Um, and a few years after that, we're all right. But he's like, this latest one is just... Uh, uh, it, it's just an iPad Air. It's just an... He said it's a MacBook Air with a stand. That's all it is on a pedestal. He said it's a MacBook Air on a pedestal. And I was like, Jesus, dude. You gotta be shitting me. That's, uh, that's wild. So, yeah, it sucks. Um, and he was like, you want to do what you're going to do, that's going to crash that computer too. So you need to get your, he, his words were, you're not the average computer consumer anymore. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> no, I can't afford to not be the average computer consumer anymore, man. <laughs> but yeah, so I had to get, uh, a computer that can do some some radical shit. So I got two monitors running smoothly with ease. I can run 15 YouTube videos while I'm streaming. Um, also got high speed internet that's that's pretty rocking. I don't have fiber optic yet because it's not in my neighborhood, but I have the next best whatever after, you know before that. I can do as much as I can do. Oh, this rabbit is just defying every law of gravity right now. She's pissed. She's pissed that I put her in her gigantic fucking house. Oh, girl. She usually has free range of um, the living room. So. Oh, but I can't keep eyes on her right now while I'm doing this. But she's going to distract me the whole time, so I'm so sorry. Anyway, that fucked me up, though, when my computer guy was like, Oh, yeah, you're not the average consumer. You have to get this high-powered machine. I was like, dude, that thing's expensive. It's so expensive. Mm-mm. <clears throat> iPhones are way too restrictive, you betcha. They just want you to do it their way. Android is, yeah, way more customizable. Mm -hmm. I have the same problem, just not from gaming. 3D modeling. Oh, God, yeah. No, yeah, that's what this was when I was reading about this. Because I, I got the M2, so it's the newest chip. It was the ch I'm sure they'll release another one next year, and this will be obsolete in a second, if they haven't already done it. Um... But I don't give a crap about having the, the newest thing all the time. I just need to have something that works for a long time. Um, but when I was, you know, because you, you can zhuzh them up. And there's like the base model. And I clicked on the base model. And then I zhuzhed it up. And I was like the highest, the highest, this with the highest zhuzhing, right, is about $8,000. And I was like, holy no, that's too much. And so um, I zhuzhed it up to what exactly what I needed. And uh, it was about four and a half. <laughs> and I got it, but I got a discount because I know somebody who's a teacher. So they just doo -doo 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 put in their teacher discount. So that shaved off like $350. And I was like, ooh, nice. Thanks for the discount. Um, student or teacher, I think. But yeah, yeah, it's expensive. But that's that's the thing they were um, boasting of this thing about was you could three, you can have like up to gazillion monitor you can have like nine monitors set up or some stupid number there's like i have two and i can have like four or five or something i can have a bunch of monitors set up and i can run like 3d modeling on all of them or something and they showed like a like a video of somebody doing that like running all these like this huge setup and it was like their job was obviously animation 3d modeling so that was that that's what this machine was like advertised for was doing 3d modeling and stuff and i was like well if it can handle all that shit it can handle me doing wild stuff with Photoshop, um, big, big files, 
because I don't know how to consolidate sometimes. Well, I've gotten better, but yeah, I shushed it up to what I needed. I didn't need it to do like bananas 3D modeling, but I could, and it wouldn't lag even a bit. So yeah, I had, that's what I'm running on. I'm running on the strongest thing Mac offers right now. I wish Apple would license those to Windows. Yeah, well, Windows sure did steal a lot from Apple for a long time. I am going to do one more thing for my sweet little rabbit. Give me a second. My child requires my care. There we go. So we'll be alright for a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, computers aside. <sighs> Let's try to make some stuff with watermelons. I don't know exactly what I want to do, but we're going to try some stuff. Let's see. We're going to open all of these. I'm just going to open a bunch of crap and throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, like I usually do. Oh, right. Oh, right. Watermelon. Do I have a watermelon texture? Some of these are watermelons, right? Watermelon texture. Would that work? I need a full circle. I need a full roundy. I need a big roundy. <laughs> I need a big old roundy. Let's see. Uh, like that, but fi like flat face on. Like that, but not a wedge. A big, just bisected water. Yes, but real. Like this. Huh. Oh, she's at it again, my bunny. Girl, I swear I will let you out in a little bit. You really gotta relax. She's only doing this because I'm chatting and she thinks when I'm talking it's hangout time. Oh god. Because uh, we usually have, you know, it's usually me and somebody else here. <laughs> and we're in there and we're hanging out with her. Ah. Uh, Sorry, fun bun. It's driving me nuts. But if I let her out and she tears stuff up around the house, it's gonna be a disaster. Oh man, she is tearing up her apartment. <laughs> she, she, I'm only laughing because she's such a little drama queen. She's she's usually a very chill bunny unless she doesn't get her way. She's kind of spoiled. I created a little bit of a monster. Um, because I spun. <laughs> I spoil her so much when when one thing doesn't go her way. Woo! She tells everybody about it. She's not like mean. She's not aggressive. She's never bitten anybody or nothing like that. She's just rabbits love to. They they have like these. If you ever look at toys at the pet store for rabbits, they usually have little like things that they can grab and toss, like toss. They're called toss and toy, toss and treat play toys or whatever. Um, but they usually have like barbell shaped things for bunnies and bunnies love to grab things and throw them when they're having fun or when they're frustrated or whatever and so she's just like how are you looking at me oh i need to get a camera just for you sweetie oh boy i know you want out you were just out all morning oh my gosh and then she goes in there for five seconds into her lovely lovely home by the way which is which is like open air right as big as a gigantic dog kennel and it's padded, so like on the floor we have sheets, like a, like from Goodwill, we just go and get sheets we don't care about. Sheets that we take away and wash every like four days. And she's potty trained, so she goes in the litter box, but she'll also poop right outside of it. That's why we have to clean her cage so often. And she's got every comfort, um, but she's a little brat. And she likes to get near the door, pull the sheet through, like she's doing right now, and chew it and make me worry that she's going to swallow it and die. Girl, stop that. You're, you're, you've never gotten out like that. You have to wait for me to open the door. God, <laughs> these creatures really push our buttons. But I love her and she's perfect. We had a rabbit and it's kind of ironic. Um, 
we had a rabbit we've had many rabbits over the years um, but our last rabbit passed away last November I was actually looking through my camera roll on my phone at my pets folder because whisper i would taken so many photos of whisper I'm trying to get them all on my computer and it's not the easiest thing to migrate a galaxy to a to a Mac but um, it's working and I was looking and I looked at the last photo of my rabbit and that was the last day he was alive and um, it was November 19th 2022 and he had had a sarcoma cancer he had had surgery he had gone through all the same things whispered gone through and he lived about the same amount of time it was about two months and he was dead and then I looked at her timeline and I was like wow it's been one year almost to the day like four days and she died of the same thing and then I couldn't help but feel like guilty because it's like did I do something I don't use air fresheners in my home. I don't use harsh cleaners. I, I treat everything as if I have babies because your pets are on the floor. So I don't clean with bleach. I don't clean with pine saw. I don't clean with anything that's got chemicals because they're going to touch it with their bare feet and then lick their feet. I've always thought of that. So like, I used to use the um, uh, Glade plugins for like literally two years because uh, I had a roommate that really liked them so we and we had like a big fucking house, like a big apartment like a three bedroom two story apartment and we had a few plugged in so like I don't think that really bothered anything it didn't bother us um, and we had other pets in that place that were never bothered by that so I don't think I did anything wrong I think this just happens that's what my vet told me <laughs> my vet and my therapist they're like no animals get sick everything gets cancer and I was like yeah if you think about it cancer has been around since before humans as long as there's been mammals or life on this planet there's been cancer to try to kill it and feed off of it for as long as it can so viruses are older than the dinosaurs you know what I mean <laughs> things like that cancer viruses cell stuff small stuff it's ancient yeah, a lot of people don't think about it like that, but that's how I have to think about it, so I don't feel like I did something wrong, because I did everything I could to make them comfortable in their last days. And after that rabbit passed, I got rid of all the rabbit stuff. I was like, I'm done. We've had rabbits for a decade. We've had three over the time. I'm done. I don't want, they're expensive. I don't want them. I love them, but I don't, I don't want any more right now. Just no. And I gave a lot of my rabbit stuff away to a friend of mine who has a rabbit who's nails I'm gonna go trim tonight because um, <laughs> it's a two-man job and she lives alone so I gotta go help her trim her bunny's nails um, but I gave her all my stuff and like literally all my stuff except for a little bit of caging that I had left and um, one night the night before my birthday last year in December this neighbor lady who I've only really ran into like twice in my seven years that I lived there, uh, she walked up and she's like, hey, I've seen you guys outside with a rabbit before. Have you lost your rabbit? And I was like, no. Uh, and she's like, it's like eight o'clock <laughs> at night. We answer the door and she's like, you lost a rabbit. And I'm like, no, we didn't. He passed away. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, but there's a bunny out here, a white one that seems lost and it's not wild. And I was like, oh. She's like, I figured you guys were the rabbit people. And I was like, oh, great. Okay. So we went out there and we looked for this rabbit and we found this little white bunny hopping around and she looked underfed and she looked like she'd been on the street for a minute. And I was like, oh, God damn it. Domesticated things don't survive long outside. Somebody dumped her. And so um, we followed the white rabbit <laughs> around the yard for like five minutes. And she tuckered out pretty quick because, you know, she's been outside for I don't know how long. And uh, I scooped her up. She was terrified, more to poor little thing. And I brought her inside. I didn't know it was her for a minute. And waited about a week. Um, put out feelers to see if anybody lost her. Put up signs. Nobody claimed her. And then I tried to get her placed in a rescue. And they were all full all the time. And nobody I know that I could trust with a rabbit was willing to take one. So since I can't trust anybody else with one to give her a good life, I know we can. So... Um, yep kept the damn thing <laughs> went finally took her to the vet found out it's a girl i had been calling her fun bun the whole time because i didn't want to give her an <coughs> like a, na <coughs> a name <coughs> excuse me frog i didn't want to give her like you know no, the wrong name i just kind of kind of let pets name themselves and she seemed like a lot of fun she, she was always hopping around happy 
you know, full of energy like she is now, even when she's, she thinks she's trapped in her cage. She's not trapped. She'll be out in a minute. But, um, she's, she always just seemed like fun. So I was like, oh, I'm going to call you Fun Bun. You're so much fun. Lots of fun. Fun, fun, bun. And so we took her to the vet and they're like, this is a girl. Um, do you want to change her name to anything else? And I was thinking like maybe Switch from the Matrix, because I'm a big Matrix fan, follow the White Rabbit. Um, she's what she's got white. She well, she's albino. She's an albino lion head. So she's got like this rockin' ass mullet, <laughs> and she's got like this cool hair, um, and she kind of looks like Switch from the Matrix with that cool whoosh, white hair. Uh, but I was thinking about that, and I was like, no, just keep her fun bun. And now it really it pays for itself. It pays in dividends because every time I go to the vet, I have endless dad joke material. So like for example, when they're calling you, they'll be like if your dog's name is Skip or something, they'll be like, is this appointment for Skip? And you're like, yeah, that's Skip. And so when they call my pet at the vet's office, they're like, is this for fun? And I'm like, yeah, I hope we have a good time. So, you know, I just get, I get to be stupid. And I always get like a, ha ha, like a, ha, ha why? You know, just ruining the vet's, <laughs> the vet's office people. <laughs> ruining their day. What is happening here? I need a round round watermelon. Let's see. There it is. I don't want I don't want Google. I want to use DuckDuckGo. That's exactly what I'm looking for, I believe. Yeah. It's not big, but I can maybe do something about that. Yeah, we'll just put it in here. Okay, yep. So yeah, fun bun kept her. Oh, now she finally tuckered herself out. Girl, I will let you out in a bit, I promise. Don't you worry. She's never in our house for long. We're really just... Rabbit, I've, all my rabbits have always been free range and they never go far. Um, they usually just hang out in the living room, but I have this one cordoned off so that when she's out, she can't get into here and chew up my desk cords and she can't get into the bedroom and chew up bedroom things and get under the bed where I can't get her out and the living room the area that she's like cordoned off in is fully rabbit proofed um like I got split loom tubing on all the wires my playstation all my entertainment is like in a cabinet uh, like it's it's you wouldn't know it's rabbit proofed um but I had a friend come over the other day who's never been here before and she was like I know you're a gamer where's your playstation I've seen it before and I was like oh it's in this cabinet and she's like she looked around and she's like, oh, I don't see anything your rabbit can chew on. And I was like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's because I've had to replace some cords, definitely. Mostly auxiliary cords. Like I have a speaker set up to my PlayStation and my projector. So if I ever have my speaker too low or if the cord's hanging down, she'll just run by and one little snip and it, that's it. I always have an extra auxiliary cable. <laughs> I got like three, oh, three unopened packs of extra auxiliary cables just in case I fall asleep and the rabbit gets to it somehow because that's my life that's your life with a rabbit you gotta make everything rabbit proof so they can't destroy stuff because they will that's their thing they like to chew and you can't get mad at them you can't discipline them you have to give them toys and she has toys she has oh my gosh she's got so much stuff but sometimes they want to put their teeth on stuff that doesn't belong in their mouth so it's got to work around it. Let's see, did I make this big? I did. It should be fine. Let's copy, copy. There's my color selector. Where's my fist? Oh god, I opened too much. Okay. <laughs> I bit off more than I could chew. We're working with, uh, working with the blue, yeah, this one. I'm gonna try some stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. Okay. I'm just seeing what's possible here. Did I get that fist without the melon? I have that one. Kind of like that one more. Hmm. Hmm. Let me, let me have that again. Take that down here and just drop that off over there. I want to see if I can get that fist. Ooh, is that the same? Ooh. Ooh. So I have to start with a million different things and then see what see what see what flushes out. See what happens. 
Yeah, I might as well save it. Keep it big. And we're gonna drop it in there. That's how it goes. They decide what the toys are. Oh yeah. So we're starting watermelon revolution. Yep, we're doing a watermelon revolution. Um, I'm a little chilly today. I really am. I have a space heater and it's cold in here. Ari I live in Arizona and it finally dipped below 70, so we're, <laughs> we're all freezing. I have a heater, but I don't want to turn it on because I want to save energy. Um, it's not freezing in here. It's like bright and sunny and 70 something outside, but it gets a little chilly in the morning. Uh, in the desert, so. But I am a little cold today, so I'm gonna wear my Shema or my Kafia, whatever. I think, uh, I think this is a Kafia. Scarf. I'm gonna wear my scarf. We're gonna, we're gonna look at watermelons. Just this week started getting really cold and really cold. I mean, 40s, yeah, that's the lowest it gets where I live. <laughs> There's parts of Arizona that, that, you know, has snow, but not, not here. Um,. Yeah, and if I stop talking or get a little more quiet and less talkative, it's because I have no discs in my jaw. Ah, and I'm about a week out from, uh, two weeks out from my Botox that I get just so I can talk without pain and eat with minimal pain. Mostly helps with the talking. Ah. Um, if I let it go and I don't get the Botox, I get lockjaw. It's pleasant, so... Yes, I have to get it every three months. I used to get it every six. Yeah, yeah, it's a big yikes, yeah. I have uh, degenerative disc disease on crack. So, like, it started with when I was 25. Um, I, I felt like I had broken my tailbone, my coccyx, uh, like my butt. Like my, my butt really hurt. And I went to the doctor and I was like, the space above my butt, my tailbone really hurts. And they're like, well, do you remember falling or anything? And I was like, no, I don't know. Can I get an x-ray? And they're, yeah, and, you know, so I got an x-ray, didn't show any breaks or nothing weird, no fractures. And they're like, let's do an MRI. And so, cause that'll tell you more. And so I took, I did an MRI and uh, there it was. I saw on the screen my, <laughs> my discs and they weren't looking very good. They're like, your lumbar discs are degenerating. And so they, as then they said at your age, we can definitely just go ahead and say that's degenerative disc disease because you shouldn't have that given your work history, your whatever at your age. And it's, uh, yeah, it's only gotten worse. <laughs> A few years ago I had nerve ablation where they go in and they put big rods in your back and they fry your nerves out and burn them off for a few years until they kind of reform. Um, mine's definitely reformed. My back pain's worse. Well, not worse, but, like, it's worse than it was when my nerves were burned. So it's back, but, like, it's always been chronic. There's nothing I can do about it. And I don't want to keep getting my nerves burned, because it's not great to do. <laughs> but, um, I did it once just to see if it helped. It does help. Uh, but I also have been in physical therapy for, like, ten years now? Well, next year, no. Shit. This month, I think, makes my tenth year. Wow. Yeah off and on not like every week but like a few times a month every month for the last decade <laughs> I go to PT for my back and uh, it was a year or two ago that I went to the dentist routine cleaning and then I went home felt fine uh, usually always I always pop a couple ibuprofen you know after a dentist because your face can be a little sore from having your mouth cranked open for half an hour or whatever it is and I did that and was fine. And the next day I was not fine. Like really, really not fine. And um, turns out over the course of a few days, my jaw was locking, though I was getting like legit lock jaw. And uh, <coughs> I had it for four months. I could not eat. I could not get my mouth open wider than my fingertip. Like it was locked and um, scary I, it was terrifying I actually <laughs> had to go to the I had to go to the doctor I had to go to PT for my jaw I had to get shots in my face um, I had to do like heat and ice therapy all day every day for four months like constant no matter what I like I couldn't work that much either because I couldn't talk I had to talk through my teeth it was no oh my god <laughs> it was the worst um, but ever since then, I've been getting regular medical Botox in my masseter muscle and stuff, like on the sides of my face, just to keep that jaw loose. Woo! And right now it's toit, because it's at the end of the 
into that third month. <laughs> I actually had to have him move it up a week because I was like, it's bad. I've been feeling this one grind a lot. And every time my, I, I, I go to a jaw guy, it's not just like a regular Botox clinic. It's at the core Institute, which is like pain management <laughs> people. And I, my, my jaw guy, he, every time he touches my face, um, he winces when he feels my <laughs> joint right here. He's like, Ooh. And I'm like, man, don't remind me. <laughs> like, I'm the one who has to feel it all the time. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> But it's been really grinding lately, so I don't think I have disc left. Uh, when I did see it in an, on an MRI a few years ago, it looked like a ghost just kind of passing through the image. It didn't, it didn't look like a healthy disc. I have a few healthy discs, discs up top, and I saw them on the MRI, and the, the, the doctor pointed them out, and he's like, here's a, here's a good one, you have a good one here, and it's like nice and milky white and opaque, and you can see it, and it's like solid. And then the other ones below are just they're ghostly. <laughs> they just kind of disappear as you go down my back. Oh, man. And then I, I had an MRI done on my face, and that's during my, my lockjaw. Right as soon as my lockjaw released, I, had, I was taking fistfuls of ibuprofen. And as soon as it, like, let up and I could get, like, a few fingers in my mouth, they're like, okay, we're going to MRI. We're gonna, the inflammation's down. We're going to MRI you now. And they didn't find. They, they found no disc here and a little bit here. And they're like, that's probably the cause of your lockjaw. Your muscles are overcompensating because you're grinding bone on bone to talk and eat. And I was like, oh, nifty. That's fun. Cool. Love that for me. <laughs> love, love that for me. How fun. So that's my life. Um, it's so great. But honestly, there's worse things happening in the world, and I don't have too many complaints. Other than my body is uh, defying me in every sense of the term. And I'm not that old, damn it. <laughs> Come on. Let's hurry up with these uh, nanobot solutions to rebuild my... Rebuild me. We have the technology. Come on. We're getting close. I'm ready to be a cyborg. I've been ready for about ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. All right, we pop that in. We pop the fist in. Let's. We got the color selector, but I think everything's gonna be fine because I have everything else in that color already. I'm just gonna drop a bunch of crap on here, and we're gonna see what flushes out. Uh, I don't need that. Could use that. Drop that in. That's already there. I see what I can do there, so that's fine. I might try to get that away from there. No. Let's see. Deselect. Okay. Color sector. Oh, yep. We'll keep that up just in case. I think I dropped that in. Um, I'm not going to save it. That's the one we already worked on. Don't save it. Uh, it's already saved. That I already dropped that. All right. So I want that fist. <laughs> That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Okay. Um. There we go. But hold on. Never mind. It's gonna grab the whole circle, ain't it? Don't. Don't. Oh. Okay. Don't grab the whole circle. Okay. Do I want the white? Nope, just the gray. The graphic things are hard to look at. Oh no. Oh wait, it's fine. Hold on. Maybe there is a better way. Yeah. I'll just, yeah, that's better. I don't want to mess up the fingers. I'll mess up the fingies. Just get away, get get rid of that circle. This shit, I'm sick of that thing popping up all the time. I get it, it's handy for when you need to use that tool, but 90% of the time it's in my way. You hear that, Adobe? It's in my way. <clears throat> Move it around a bunch. All right, at least it's movable. I can't complain too much. All right, is that what I want? Let's see how that looks with that. Yeah. I can just shave that off manually, right? It's just... 
link. Whoops. I should make that a hard hard edge, but whatever, you get the idea. <clears throat> I do everything with a soft edge. Because I usually do pictures. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've been busy with stuff, like work. I haven't, I haven't not been doing anything, actually. I've been all of, Jesus, <laughs> all of um, these things are things I've been doing recently. I've been updating my website, so I, you know, I did a wedding recently, I've done a couple engagement shoots, lots of different families. I even took pictures of a yoga master lady. That was fun. And this weekend I got shoots every day. I just don't always show those on Twitch because, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I get consent, sometimes I don't remember to, and I can't always remember who I got consent from, so. I just don't. Oh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I'll go back to. Oh, yeah, there's my cat. I took pictures of my cat on her last day. I can show you before we get off here. Anyway, making some art. I want this fist on this clipboard. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and lose that. Don't save it. Don't need it. There's the color selector just in case we want to. It's just a pretty color pattern. It's nothing specific. I just like the red, the black, the white, and the green. I think it's neat. We're gonna use those colors today. We're gonna mix some random elements. Fists, watermelons, you know, just fun. Crazy. It's like we spun a wheel almost. Uh, let's see. Phew, uh -huh. Definitely want to use that watermelon. Let's see, turn a bunch of stuff off. There's those fists. Let's move these down. Potential backgrounds. Okay, now we're getting closer to doing something. Okay. Okay. What's the right? That looks good. Trying to get in the corner nicely. Okay. You know what? There's a pigeon on my window. Hello, pigeon. I have a bird feeder positioned right on my window, and they dumped it just after I filled it so now I'm making them wait and they sit on my windowsill and they look at me and they'll tap on the glass uh, I've created little monsters <clears throat> okay that's a background just kind of futzing around making these fit we're gonna do some different things. It's kind of a process. I like it like that. That's nice. That's just there for texture. Okay. Get a load of that watermelon. It's a nice watermelon. Let's see. We'll get a load of that one. That's fun. These ones I worked on earlier. It's kind of overlaid it. No specific shape or nothing. Just, um, just wanted. I just really wanted a watermelon that was this shape, this specific shape. I just, you know, just really liked, um, just really liked the uh, the edges. Kind of cool. Yeah, just, just neat. Thought that was a neat looking piece of watermelon. Does not look like a pigeon. I typed pigeon. An emo thing, and that's what I came up with. That does not look like a pigeon. No, that, I don't know what that is. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo. All right. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with this guy. Uh, you know... Okay, I like the idea. Hold on. Let's see. 
Um, yo, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, who looks like who looks like they don't have any licenses? Yeah, that's probably fine. I've been doing this for so long. Yeah, Blocksmith, that's probably a PNG. Most of these things come from PNG sites that I already have, like clip art things that I already have subscriptions to, so. Instead of fishing through all the crap, I usually just go to DuckDuckGo. Yeah, those should be fine. <laughs> see what happens. Okay, let's... Goodbye. Get rid of that. Bring that down. Bring that down. Let's see which one I like better. It's probably going to be the shiny one. It's kind of gripping the watermelon. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Yes. Gosh, I don't know. We got these. Okay, these are the fists we have to choose from. I can always change colors and whatever. I'm going to do more blending and stuff. Right now I'm just kind of getting the elements together that I definitely want. I'm not sure what I want yet. Now I just want to see which fist I like. I don't think I like that one. Random question, what's your favorite print aspect ratio? Oh shit, um, for what? Depends on the thing we're printing. Um, this, I'm not sure. This, I'm making a square right now just for social media's sake. But if I was to print it, like an art piece, um, I usually just think in terms of like posters, like 11 by 17s. Right? That's usually like, I look around at the art prints that I have on the wall, that's usually what they are, right? 11 by 17, something like that? I think that's typically the size I make things in. But I try to do squares now because, you know, it's going to go on social first before it ever gets printed. Universal crop for my stuff, but different crops look better on different things. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's that's the thing. I don't really have a favorite because it really depends on the image. <laughs> it totally depends on the image and what you're doing. Are you, are you working with pictures? Because pictures kind of have a set crop that people like them too so they can get, you know, eight by tens or whatever but if I'm doing a piece that's different <clears throat> or if I'm doing it for social media or if I'm doing it for my Instagram or my Facebook or whatever I think it's gonna be this one yeah I think it's gonna be that one I think that's good. Thinking in terms of what's easiest to find a frame for, weirdly enough, it's not very easy to think to find a 2x3 frame that's not a poster frame. Oh yeah, or just a 4x6. Yeah, I know Lightroom always, what's the, 
What's the crop Lightroom always sticks to? Shit. Um. Somebody told me once when I was in college. They they were like, oh, you should always go and click this one setting, four by five, eight by ten, I believe. I think that's the one. Or two by three, four by six. It's like these two are going to be your most popular that people are going to get. So when you're doing portraits, it should be in this. When you're doing landscapes, it should be like this or something like that. So it just it just depends. I don't I never fuck around with that. I edit. I crop how I crop. And it's up to you to figure out the frame. <laughs> no, like, it, I try to make things work fine, you know. But most of the stuff I shoot for myself, I don't think about that. I, usually that's just for other people when I'm doing portrait stuff. Okay, that's, yeah, that's definitely the fist I want to work with. Okay, but what about in the background? Let's see get rid of my snooze. <clears throat> snoozer. Alright, okay. What do we got here? You know what? Hold on. Let me look up one more thing. Uh, oh boy. Okay. There we go. I spelled it right? Holy cannoli. Pat myself on the back. That's the shit. I didn't think I'd spell it right. Um, yeah. Let's see. Fish is, is the pattern. Random. <laughs> Significant, but random. Let's see. Um, we're keeping it random for Twitch. <whistles> like the net, like the nets. Ooh. Pattern wall. I like that. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. thinking. Hmm. Is that the, yeah, that's the traditional. No, that's houndstooth. That's, that's the one right there with the, with the, this, 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 this. That's what I'm looking for. This? Oh, that's, Oh, I just got a watermark on it. I don't fuck with that. <clears throat> this? Mm, yeah. Yes, technically. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Getting good at spotting that pattern now. Um, ooh, dang. I wish I had that one. Black with white? Ah. Oh, dang. Mine's just black on black. You can't really see my pattern. That's dope. Mine's got the pattern though. It's on there. I just got the all black one. <laughs> black with white though. What? That's dope. Um, I think that's... I think what I got there is going to work. Just checking it out. Ooh, flowy. Hmm. 
Yeah. I think what I got works. Okay. Let's get back to it. Beep, boop. Oh, and if you're wondering why, like, this is, like, I, why I ratio this crap like this is just to make it as big as I can in the DPI with 300. It's just a quick click. It doesn't actually matter because it's going to get warped and pushed and pulled and all those other things. So, did it print? Hey, there you go. Excuse me. <clears throat> I just need to get them as big as possible so they look as clean as possible so that I can blow it up and uh, it doesn't look grainy. Okay. Enlarge it, I should say. Enlarge it. <laughs> I just realized. Okay. Let's turn that on. Ooh, sheesh. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's the perfect square. How about them apples? How about them apples? Oh, has that got a watermark? Oh, it's got a fucking watermark. I didn't see that. Adios, amigo. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, we're getting somewhere. Ooh, I like that. Subtract. Subtract. Overlay. It subtracts the one. I like the way it changes the color. Looks, yeah, it does look like an optical illusion test. <clears throat> it's fun. It's fun to look at. Alright, well, let's see. Do I want that coffee out there? No. Goodbye. Okay. Yo. Eh, I think that needs to just be what it is. How about you? Losing too much of its watermelony goodness. But I like the idea of replacing the seeds with that fishnet structure. But that seems like a lot more work than I'm willing to do. Because uh, I'm not sure it will look right. So I think I'll just leave it like that. But, oh, I know a trick. Wait. I know what to do. So that's what it, no, normal, thank you, that's what it looked like, that's what that did. Okay, yeah, that's what I want, a little more contrast. Get rid of that, that's fine. That's cool, but all by itself, really. <clears throat> We're gonna get nuts here. And 
this. It's pretty chill, pretty chill. Okay, I like that. Get rid of that guy. I think that's that one's for a different thing. That could be a tattoo that it has. <laughs> That's something. Just making watermelon art today, guys. Just watermelon art. I think I like that. That's pretty cool. Is that off center? Not like off center. Wait, where's the center? Oh, that's the center? Oh, no. More centralized than that melon boy. right there. That's a good point for it. Okay. And then I have I think I'll save I'll save that as is. I'm gonna do something else here. Hold on. I don't like that edge. Feather a selection. God dang it. No. Oh boy. I forget. Oh no, I forget. <laughs> you blend a selection. No. <laughs> I forgot. Oh golly. I forgot how to do that. Ooh, boo. That's how you do it. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, almost. Okay. There it is. 
think that works. Yo, that worked. Sweet. I think that's exactly what I needed. Yeah, and I got rid of that hard line around it. Okay, I'm happy with that. Just smooth that boy out. Working on closing the office down. Oh no, you don't have to be sorry for nothing. That's cool. I'm shocked I have anyone in my chat. Thank you. <laughs> now I think I've had like ten people in my chat before at once. I've, some days are great and I have a bunch. Other days I don't have nobody. But it doesn't matter because uh, I think the first thing I ever saw about streaming on Twitch was um, stream as if nobody's watching. So because that's usually what it's going to be, <laughs> and that's fine with me. I'm streaming this because I just really wanted to make watermelon art today. Really, really just wanted to make something with watermelons. Sounded like a good time. Let's see. Uh, melon Fist. We'll call this one for now. I'll come up with a more appropriate name offline. <clears throat> I like that. That's groovy. Can I make that a little bit tighter? That's what she said. You can ask me whatever you want. It doesn't guarantee I'm going to answer. <laughs> also, be careful. It's a great way to get booted and banned right off the bat. Shield mode's on. Uh, oh, it's a scammer. Oh, fun. We have a scammer in the chat. That's fun. So now scammers take to Twitch, huh? Oh, cute. How do you ban someone, low base? <laughs> I've never had to do it. Let's see. Oh, here we go. I think I figured it out. Oh, here we go. Bingo, bango, bongo, donezo. Oh, and there's the ban button. I found it. <laughs> there we go. That was easy peasy. My first ban. Fun. <coughs> you love to see it.
Also type ban username. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Thank you. I never remember the um, the key key things, the hot key things. I can never remember those. Let's see. Color selector. Yeah. Um, how helpful people are, huh? You know, I have been accused of being generous in the past. Um, a friend of mine told me, well, a therapist gave me, uh, also, there's also a setting depending on what you're, just click, yeah, I just clicked, um, and there was the ban button. A friend of mine told me once that they suspected that I was generous, um, and I only, they only told me that because I, I, my therapist was like, uh, you need to find one good thing to say about yourself every day because I'm not nice to myself. And I was like, okay, that's going to be tough. Um, at first he gave me the chore of three things a day and I was like, no, one thing a day is hard enough. Uh, but I had to ask people around me. I was like, am I, what are good things about me? And my partner who's known me for like 15 years was like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, I don't know good things. And he was like, you're generous. And I was like, and he's like, you do mutual aid, you risk arrest feeding homeless people. Um, I've literally seen you give your last dollar to somebody. And I was like, oh yeah, I got, yeah, I guess so. And I was like, but don't, don't everybody, doesn't everybody do that? And I posed that question to my therapist and I was like, doesn't everybody do that? And he's like, no. And, no, and everybody I've asked, they're like, no, no, not everybody does that. And I was today years old when I found out that not everybody just does that, I thought that that's... Fuck, man. So disappointing to find out that people just don't do that. <laughs> it's like, damn. But yeah, um, I'd love to be helpful if I didn't have negative dollars in my bank account. So, yeah. That'd be great. I'm today years old, too. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Same age, same birthday. Alright, I think I saved that. I'm happy with that. Now I gotta do something else. Um, does this one match this one? Yeah. I thought I had two, but I guess I only have... I guess I only have the one. <gasps> oh my goodness, I got the hiccups. No! The odds slim to none I'd say those are the odds <laughs> yeah I don't know I saved this without the words so let's see if we like the words yeah I like the color I like the there. it's kind of hard to see I think those are good for something else that's good as it is. I think some graffiti words. I don't want to, I might have to make it myself. Let's see. Um, take from existing art, I believe. I wish I could double check what that says. Oh, it says, okay. Like this. I'll find something like that.
actually. I like that color, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna peep that. Should I make it bigger? I want it to fit on the hand. But be legible. Is it legible? Yes, I think so. 30 still comes after 29. Have you ever had that happen before? I just can't stop thinking about that person that was in our chat just in my chat just now. Has that ever happened to anybody else? Like, were they really... Were they really doing, like, a study? Or was that a scam? Or are they, like... There's so many instances of scammers online. Like, you can't... You can't judge someone's first reaction. <laughs> Everything online is a scam that I run into. I find other ways to help people than monetarily. Happens all the time. The trick is before you ban them, copy pieces of their message and paste it into your block terms and phrases. Oh! I will next time. Okay, thank you. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. All right. Oh, this, oh. I wasn't paying attention. What was I doing? Oh, wait. I want to replace it. Okay, I think I'm happy with that one. And now, what was this? What's the size of this? 11 by 11. Okay. I say copy pieces rather than the entire message because if you copy the whole message all they have to do is alter it slightly and they can chat again but if you copy smaller chunks it's less likely they'll get through. How about that? Wow. Fun. Well that was my first scammer. Good times. I want to make another one, I'm just not sure what yet.
Oh, sorry. I actually published my block terms and phrases list in the tutorials and resources room. I'm going to publish an updated version sometime soon. Ah, oh, in the Discord? I'll have to check that out. I'll do that. Uh, add that when I'm offline. That's good to know. They added, like, the main, you know, obvious curse words and stuff like that, but... Yeah, that's definitely handy. Bot messages, okay. Well, at least I figured out how the ban button works. That's easy. Easy enough. size do I want to make? I think I want to make different sizes for social. Maybe. I don't know. I'm doing this under my business thing on Twitch, but I'm going to share this on my private page, probably. <clears throat> my personal page. I just wanted to stream it here for, for fun, to see how long the stream would go on before it gets shut down. <laughs> Another quick tip, post your personal information into your blocked terms and phrases list as well. I have things like my address, phone number, SSN, etc. in there. That way if somebody has my information and tries to dox me in chat, they can't. Or at least it'll be harder to do. Shit, that's a great idea. I should definitely do that. Oh my god. Yeah, that's horrifying. Okay, yeah. I gotta figure out how to open that up in Streamlabs. Um, I'm sure it's somewhere in the chat settings, right? Mod actions. Da -da 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 -da. Deleted messages. Shield mode. Manage moderation settings. That's probably, yeah, okay. It'll open up Twitch and show me all that stuff. Yeah, I can do that from Twitch later, I guess. Okay. It's not, yeah, it's on Twitch. Streamlabs does have one. Yeah, I will do it on my Twitch dashboard. It showed me that it would open up to Twitch, so. I'll do it on my dashboard, for sure. Well, I'm not sure what else I want to make, and I'm getting kind of hungry. I feel like I should go get some food. Oh my god, I've been doing this for two hours? I only plan on streaming for an hour. Well, that's great. Sorry, I wasn't... I'm not the best talker sometimes when I'm working and my jaw hurts, but... We did alright. Plus, I had to get up and chase my rabbit a little bit, because she's a stinker. But that's okay. So, to recap, what did we do today? Class? I did fine. Yeah, right. Uh, thank you. I showed you the trailer from Left at Wall. That's exciting. And then we got into uh, watermelon art, because watermelons are so much fun. You know? Watermelons are fun. Where's all the watermelons? Let's find out. <laughs> I made this. Watermelon with a fist. That's cool. That's exciting. There's also this one. Oh, wow. Look at that. Different variation. So, yeah, I'm going to go share that on the internet, put that out in the world. I'm not even going to watermark it. That one's for free. That one's for the world. <clears throat> Let's put it in circulation. All right. Well, I think that's, that's it. I'm done. Adios. I'm going to. Grab a snack, drink some water. What else should I do? Let my rabbit out before she loses her damn mind. <laughs> Poor little thing. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, dude. I appreciate it. Appreciate having somebody watch. <laughs> Chat. Thanks, I appreciate you. See ya, have fun closing it up at work today. I'll try to catch your next stream. I try to catch whenever the uh, Discord it's like multiple times a day whenever that happens whenever I'm free I try to click it and catch whoever happens to be streaming just so I can sub and follow to new people alright that's it yeah alright cool well I'm gonna go I'm gonna think about watermelons 
and um, Revolution. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Maybe we'll do some uh, Yule stuff next time. I need to make something for a post for the holidays. And I happen to celebrate Yule. So I've been kind of inspired by some Yule stuff lately, and I'm thinking about making some Yule art. Uh, I like Krampus, Mari Lude, or however you say that, Laud Lude? I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to get into that maybe on the next stream. So thank you. Take it easy. Have a good one. Adios. Yes, watermelons in the chat. Thank you. Team streamer, Ren Million separates you. Oh, cool. Ren Million. <laughs> Ren. Ren That's a fun word to say. Ren Million. Celebrates Yule. Yeah, Christmas stole everything from Yule. And uh, when I moved to Norway, I really liked Yule. I got to learn to love it. Never got to celebrate it before until I lived there. And I brought it back with me. So it's Yule here. Yep, see ya. Bye. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. One more thing. I should clip this before I go. I always forget. <clears throat> always forget. Okay. Here. Let's take my, take my scarf off. Fix my hat. Fix my hair. My hat. I'm not wearing a wig today. If I ever say I have a hat on and it looks like I have hair, it's because I'm wearing a wig. But this isn't a hat. <laughs> this isn't a hat. My hair. I just got a haircut. All right. So, before I sign off of here, hi, <laughs> no, thanks for tuning in. I'm Big Click Energy. Um, I have a real human name, but it's really weird and hard to spell and pronounce. So we just go by Big Click Energy here. Um, but I'm Big Click Energy. Thanks for tuning in. You can find me across all the social medias, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, unfortunately still Facebook. Um, I think that's it. Go to bigclickphoto.com. Check out my work. Send me a message. We can set something up if you're in Arizona. If not, and you have the funds, I'll travel for work. So yeah, I do photography, graphic design, all the things. Let me know. We can collaborate. Oh, and cosplay too. Just go look at my portfolio. It's a whole thing. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.